Hello and welcome to Talking Schmidt. I'm your host, Eric Schmidt. And hello, I'm Greg Burmeister. And we have the very funny comedian Kevin McCaffrey with us today. Welcome, Kevin. Thank hello. you for being here. How are you? I'm great. Thank you for having me. This of course. Is my second, second or third uh, uh, Eric and Greg podcast yeah. experience. <laughs> this is your. This is this will be your third. Great. Uh, you were our first guest we ever had. Oh my god. So now you're our first guest with video, which uh, the listeners won't understand what we're talking about there. But if you're watching this, you're going to understand. What they we're can talking. watch and listen that's true you yeah. know you guys got both you guys got both yeah. uh, are, are you on the youtube premium do i'm you, not on youtube premium that? it's fantastic because no. you can listen to things uh while your phone is locked that's one of those th that's pretty high on my list and i do have in a notes app a list of things that once i have money of any sort <laughs> like what should i just do because i'm this old I, i'm like because <laughs> i'm 41 and just i don't i need to give myself some convenience now viewers it's will like, be able to tell that you're yeah, 41 uh, listeners you. <laughs> will not be able to yeah uh so kevin we went to the beach last summer right mm -hmm. and I, I can't remember which friend of ours was with us whether it was uh whether it was Casey James Salango or uh, our friend Evan Altshuler. Do you remember? Like, I don't when... think it was Casey James. Okay. It might have been Evan. Robert Dean might have been in the mix okay. as yeah. well. And you told, yeah, and you told this story that had us just jaws on the ground. Uh, mm -hmm. Would you mind reciting it here on the podcast? Sure. Uh, so basically, this, this is from when I did warm-up on Letterman, right? Yes, of course. So yeah. uh, I did stand-up on the Letterman show, worked there as an intern and like page and music assistant many, many years ago, right out of college. Right. Then left the show for a writing job and came got booked years later as a stand-up. Then uh, it was great because the stand-up set went nicely. The audience was great and it felt like a nice homecoming and uh, And I was like wonderful. I can leave it at that and then two months later They I got contacted by the people who booked stand-ups and they were like uh, the guy who's been warm-up for many many like years decades yeah. like a Cal Ripken like streak of like, <laughs> right. like when I was in high school I saw like Eddie Holy Brill shit. do uh, <laughs> like do do the warm-up was it his same set that he's been doing uh, the uh, Disney is bigger yeah. horse than all of us. I, think, I can't remember. Uh, yeah, the Times Square chunk, but yeah, yeah. Eddie was you know legendary warm up guy, and so he needed emergency throat surgery. Oh wow! On like very short notice. Oh wow! So I was told they like picked a couple of people who were local and it had sets on Letterman recently, and like who would Dave be cool with? And they were like, so we decided you, and uh, he was into it, and. Would you like to do it? And I was like, no, but like, you know, not because like, I mean, it's weird because warm up, it's not, it's weird, like retroactive bucket list thing that was not on my bucket list to begin with. Right. But I'm like, you can't say no to him. So I did. I went and it was like, I don't get nervous for stand up, but it's, it's the most nervous I've been. How long, is it eight minutes or 10 for the opening, for it's, like the intro? The stand up is, the stand up of it is like, I don't know, five to seven, I right. think. But then it's like, you intro a, a video that like, it was Alec Baldwin telling them the rules Oh, that's and right. Stuff. Oh, yeah, okay. yeah, I remember that. And then, like turn off your phone and like all that. That kind of yeah. stuff. Yeah, exactly. And maybe you do one or two jokes about the rules and then you have to like introduce the band and all this stuff, whatever. It Introducing the band has to be the most fun thing. It's fun when you get like, <laughs> so it was, there was a few different people than from when I was a music assistant, so I had to like relearn some names. Oh, okay. I didn't want to <laughs> fuck it up, you know? Um, so I, yeah, so whatever, the first week goes great. Dave's also part of the warm up is and when you're done and you introduce the band, they play a couple songs. Dave, you see in the wings and you go, uh, are you ready to meet Dave? Ladies and gentlemen, David Letterman, you hand him the mic. He gives you a shout out, whatever. He throws that mic around. He throw, whips it <laughs> yeah. around. Yeah, exactly. He takes two. It's really alarming around. to anyone who hasn't been there for that. He's always banging it like, on his head. <laughs> it is really, yeah. As a music man, that must be uh, oh, offensive to some yeah, degree. It made me cringe every day. <laughs> yeah. So week one, great, and they're like, you know, and the director Jerry Foley like took me out for drinks afterwards and, and was like, Kevin, the best thing I can say is like people weren't talking about you, and that's like, <laughs> he's like, that's no news huge. is good news. Yeah, yeah. like. Because no one had done warm up except for Eddie and you guys both worked there. And yeah, 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 yeah. I have I have Eddie set memorized. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> we should all get together sometime yeah. and do it. Um, and then the next week, uh, you know, I thought that way. I thought I left and everything left fine. And then the next week it was like Wednesday, and they, I got a call and they were like, "Hey, can you come in 
in in like two hours to do warm up, and I was like, uh, I'll well, see what <laughs> right yeah. why and uh, let me get a coffee in me and I'll uh, see how I feel. I <laughs> <Yeah>. guess. <laughs> and it was kind of nice because I actually had to shift around some stuff. I was doing uh, VH ones. I love the two thousands at the time, so oh I had gosh. to like That's so awesome. I had to like tell them I couldn't because of Letterman. I had to tell Letterman wait on this because I so it made me sound busy. I haven't yeah. done anything in six years, but uh, at the time things were okay, and uh, so I went back. And the, uh, probably this story I told you is the the conflict that came up, um, and you guys both know, like Dave is my guy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Most influential ar- argument for like most influential man in my life, <laughs> like, sure, yeah. who, uh, in history. Uh, he was my favorite guy growing up. I love him. Uh, he. So I say that because he, I think thought I was going to take the job full time and then decided to, I don't know, test me. I don't know how much of a conscious thing this was or whatever. Um, but they offered me the job full time and I said, I don't right, want yeah. it. Like that was what when, when they initially asked you, like before you came and did any of it, right? They asked you if you wanted it full time and you said no, but you were like, the I'll The second come time in. they did. Oh, okay. Gotcha. Because I was just doing a week to fill in Freddie at first. Right. And then the um, job became open for for a long time and they wanted you there the, the yeah they asked if i want it and i said uh, no thank you um what but, goes into that decision by the way like why why didn't you want it personally and it's this isn't this isn't like necessarily fair or right but you guys know how sometimes when you're like if you're working on a show in a certain capacity it changes how the people there look at you mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. you know and i did not want these people to think of me as warm up guy. Okay. Um, and no disrespect, there's great comics we know who do warm up stuff. Yeah, yeah. And it's a good gig money wise and stuff, but also there's less freedom in it. They kind of own you. I'd have to like cancel all my, uh, all the weeks I have lined up. Yeah. So I mean, just, Eddie Brill also was very good at it. Yeah, exactly. And he did, he, yeah, he, he had it locked down. And that's just, that's also just not the kind of comic I am. You guys know me and it's like <laughs> the warm up. Doing the show is very easy because Dave says you're funny and you do your comedy. Warm up, they're expecting to see Dave and they see this not famous guy. Yeah, all and, they're doing <laughs> is waiting for Dave to come out. Yeah, and like I'm a comic who tells like true stories and stuff like that. That's not who works in this scenario. No, you got to right. like crowd work it and energy and that's not really me. So it just wasn't, <laughs> I didn't want to do it. And Dave, I think, thought I, he, he, I was going to be the guy. And so I think he had to like tough up on me. And after I handed him the mic, he let the mic go to his leg. He looked off to the side to one of the producers and Bill Sheft, who's kind of like his right yeah, hand man yeah, up there. The guy who was always eating an apple. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And like, telling, you know, and telling him stories yeah. uh, during the breaks and stuff. And Bill's lovely. He's a very nice guy. And uh, he pointed at Bill. And he was clearly a- angry about something. And then he does the warm up, and then after, as the band's playing and he's walking back, he goes, he's supposed to stand here. He's supposed to stand here. And he's like pointing at a spot. And then he points at me and he goes, you stand there. And I was like, okay, man. And <laughs> Jeez. then you go like lead the crowd and clapping right. as the warm up. And then uh, Bill Chef came up to me and he's like, I, I don't know what's happening. I don't, I don't know. I'll, I'll figure it out. And then clearly after, like, he, so he does monologue, he does act one. We're in the commercial break, and Dave's clearly, while the band's playing, still yelling about me. <laughs> Just and can't I'm, move geez. past it. No, and so I was like, I'm, I'm trying to make eye contact with him during this chaos. And then when he sort of catches me, I'm like, do you want to talk to me? Do you want to talk to me? Whoa. And he sort of just like doesn't acknowledge it. And <laughs> you got uh, something God. to say, old man. Did you, have you heard this story before? Greg? No. Oh no. man. And one of the floor directors came up to me, uh, Frank, and he was like, "What's going on?" And I sort of explained, and he goes, "You'll be back." And I'm like, "No, I won't." <laughs> like I'm saying, I, I won't. And uh, <laughs> I told you I didn't want this job. Yeah, I keep telling you guys. So I keep doing you fuckers favors. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so this is on a double tape day, and so Bill Shaft afterwards tells me like, "I'll go find out." what's up I don't know what's up and then apparently where I was standing to hand Dave the mic was not right but the way he explained it to Chef, uh you know Chef was explaining to me he's like I don't I don't know what we're talking about here I, I don't you know he was he was a very good mediator and uh 
uh, you know, because I'm like, I don't, I'm not artistically driven to stand in any one place to hand you the mic. Just tell me whatever and yeah. I'll do it. And did, I mean, it must it also like, it must have seemed to have, no audience member would have been like, man, that guy sure seems like he's in an awkward spot yeah, handing off that microphone. six inches to the left. <laughs> no, and it was, and I had done it for a whole week and there was no problem. So I don't know what, I, it, it was just like, there had to be a problem. And, <laughs> and Dave's like, man, that guy just keeps doing it wrong. Yeah. When is someone going to tell that guy? Right. And so like, I then, you know, we're in between shows and I'm like pissed. And also a reason I didn't want to take the warm up job, especially at this point, was like Dave mean, means so much to me. I think he's amazing. I think he's, you know, such yeah. a fucking genius. And um, despite this, yeah, of course, yeah, yeah. <laughs> what, yeah. what if you're like, like, well, that guy sucks now. <laughs> well, right. Well, and it's like that's I don't know if you guys are like this. I've never felt more boomer than reading the like Jimmy Fallon workplace is bad stuff. Right. I'm like, oh, I don't yeah. know what you got. Like, got to grow up. Some of you guys got to <laughs> sack up here a little bit. Like TV's weird. You know, that's fine. But it wasn't worth it to 12 year old me to like have any beef with Dave in my life. Right. You sure. know, so I'm like, I'm not. What, whatever. I'm just not going to be treated like, like that. Like, all right, I'll, I'll, I will stand one foot to the, the right. Well, I um, did. The way it was explained was so crazy, though, and I was so pissed and over it that, like, the Dave's assistants would come to you after a warm up uh, before Dave came down. They'd be like, How's the audience? It's like, The audience has been good every day for 20 <laughs> years. I mean, like, there's a full staff of talented people who book the audience specifically to be good. Y'all don't know. No bad crowds yeah. are here. This is good. But they, they asked, and I, I told uh, one of his assistants, I was like, this is a, the best they've been in the two weeks I've been here. And she's like, I'll tell them they're fine. And <laughs> Yeah, like, also, what the fuck does it matter? And, like, you're going to find out. Yeah, yeah. well, and the thing, the, what was what Dave hated was when he runs out behind you, then he come, comes to take the mic, I wasn't, he wanted me to, like, turn my back to the crowd and hand it to him instead of, like, hand it to him side to side. Like, just... <laughs> Right. I was like, whatever. Okay, sure. And then, so the second time when I did that, I handed him the mic. And uh, if Greg is Dave, he's taking this. I like held on to it for a second. And I just uh, said, is this good? Is this good? <laughs> oh, man. Yeah. And, oh, buddy. <laughs> and he was, and he just goes, yeah. <laughs> and, like, and then he like. And then I, you got the show. Yeah. Which is then, yeah. That, that's all they were waiting for. And then after he does his warm up, he comes, he turns around and just said something. To, it's loud. But he said something like, let's see if we can make these fuckers laugh. Or he said like <laughs> something to that effect. And I explained this whole situation to the woman who booked me afterwards. And she's like, yeah, he just said you were good. So like <laughs> this, I don't know what happened really, but I, it was very, it was a very stressful afternoon for me with my hero who had also given me my biggest career break, like in two or three different ways. Um, but yeah, ultimately, ultimately he was lovely to me. Big picture. It was just like really weird. Yeah, and really it's like you were one. a rookie quarterback handing off the ball to Barry Sanders. <laughs> yeah. And he's not happy with the way you turned. Or Still scored a touchdown. Yeah, but right. it's like, but hey, like, you know, yeah, there's, there's the there's handoff could have been there's better. There's a small thing you could have done here. Uh, <laughs> yeah. So that, I mean, so that's it, man. But I, it was. It, <laughs> and that was the Wait, sorry. That was yeah. the day that you got called in last second that all that no that oh, okay. was uh that was the day after that so i came in gotcha. the wednesday and apparently some maybe i handed it to him wrong that day and uh then the double tape thursday was uh was when all the beef you know well goodness <laughs> hopefully hopefully you and dave can patch things up yeah i, think, um, yeah, I don't think he's too worried about it <laughs> <laughs> so after that though is when or well actually i guess what's the timeline there when did you start doing the uh the True TV stuff. That was before. Yeah, that would have been True TV. World's Dumbest Stuff started in 08. So and you, you did that for a lot, quite a few seasons. Yeah, right? 08 like, to 2014, 200 wow, episodes. Wow. Yeah. And I found out recently that uh, I didn't realize that they were recording on different coasts. So there were some West Coast people. There were some East Coast people. Who, who, was, who would you see around uh, at the... You know, at the, at the New York office. The East Coast was mostly your comics. This was a show where it's people pop up, talk about crazy. Right, talking head. Crazy kind of internet clips. I and love the 80s type stuff. Exactly. Yeah. Mix of D-list celebs, some C. Uh, <laughs> and, and then comedians. So the yeah. East Coast had more of the comics where it was like, me, uh, Chelsea Peretti, Mike Trainer. Yeah, I remember Mike Trainer doing it. Yeah, tra uh, he works at Howard Stern now, yeah. too. And uh, he's great. And... Uh, 
the West Coast had more like Leif Garrett, Todd Bridges, Tanya Harding, uh, and then <laughs> East Coast, and then uh, Screech was on the show. Ooh, Your boy Dustin, Dustin Diamond. Diamond. Yeah, yeah. R.I.P. Dude. He R.I.P. Indeed. He worked both coasts because he was living in Wisconsin, so it just oh. depended on whatever. <laughs> we were the cheapest flight. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah. you uh, you you saw him around though, and uh... I saw him around. I saw him. Uh, was in... he was he living a was he living like a, a, a good life? Was he how was he doing? I mean, I think the the scoreboard's out on that one. I think you know, God bless R.I.P. I don't know if it was if he was living the best, but uh, he was he, you know he was cool enough to me when I passed him, and I saw one of the like I did see one of the most like bummer showbiz interactions I've ever seen, where I was waiting to go in, and uh, there was a comic named Artie Fuqua. And yeah, yeah, Artie hosts at the uh, cellar quite a bit, right? Yeah, yeah. big time cellar guy. Yeah. Toured with Tracy Morgan a lot, and he on the way in like went to shake Screech's hand. He goes, hey, what's up, Screech? The producer said, <laughs> producer said, don't call you that, but you're cool, right? <laughs> and he was like, and I was waiting by, they were backed up, so I was he like, say no, like, please, yeah, don't call me that, you dickhead. Like, <laughs> he was cool then. He goes, oh. he, he goes, yeah, that's fine. Uh, he's like, yeah, man. And then Artie said, uh, man, I saw you at, a, at like a club like a year ago. And Screech said, uh, was I with a bunch of chicks? Screech said this. Yeah, he assumed. Uh, he's like, was I with a bunch of chicks? And Hardy said, no, nah, man, you were by yourself. <laughs> and I was like, Jesus Christ, like, get lie, me. Lie, Hardy. Yeah, put Just a Just lie to him. Just be like, uh, uh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, there was, I'm sure there were chicks around. <laughs> um, and no, then, I must have gone to the bathroom. <laughs> and then he said, Dustin goes, well, it must have been early then. And, uh, yeah, that was... Over, was over hearing so poor sad screech. Well, um... He seemed happy that day, until that, at least. He's in a better yeah. place now, at least. I think uh, that's almost undeniable, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, I heard, uh, real quick, I heard you got in a fight with some cops on Halloween once. And that's all I heard. I don't know sure. any of the details, so... Yeah, if, you got, uh, if you got any, I'd love to hear them. People are talking. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I thought I got in a fight with cops on Halloween because people told me I did. Oh. Ah. I was very drunk. I was, uh, you know, browned out, blacked out. <laughs> and on the way home, uh, I know, like, the cops definitely broke up. Was this in New York? This is in Muncie, Indiana. This is okay. Ball, oh, Ball State okay. University. And oh, college times. Yeah. yeah. David Letterman. <laughs> <laughs> That's <Lama>. true. <laughs> yeah. Maybe he was in with the cops. And, uh, you gotta get that guy. Yeah. And I, what actually happened was I got like blindside punched by some kid uh, and is just a little jacked redheaded kid I don't think I knew, but he hit me, he punched me from behind and I went face first into a curb. And I thought I just fell down because I was drunk and I, that seemed like something I would do. Sure, these things happen. <laughs> yeah. And the, until I heard him say, get up, I'll kick your ass twice tonight, motherfucker. Oh, dear. Ooh, and then I just buddy. said, I doubt you will. And I got up and had to, like, find who it was and then went at him. But people kind of kept us apart. I fractured my skull, turns out. Oh, and wow. I see a little bit there. But so my face was pretty messed up from the from the curb. Oh, so it wasn't from the punch. No. <laughs> no, it was tiny little, little, little leprechaun swinging yeah. up. Yeah, you couldn't get the angle. Uh, but the curb did the damage. And he and then so the, the cops eventually came to the house party and like busted this up. My now wife and our friend Elizabeth were both dressed as dead hookers and were inside waiting for the bathroom. Then they came out, there were cop lights, and someone's like, Kevin got in a fight. He's gone. And she's <laughs> like, what? And uh, I, on the way home, the friend who was going home with me, uh, he was convincing me that the cops were the ones who beat me up. <laughs> and so I'm like, just read... I have fucking brain damage. I'm blacked out. <laughs> yeah, so I'm sort of believing CT, whatever. Yeah. yeah, big CT. And so I'm like, yeah, telling Jamie, like, the yes, yeah, so I guess the cops hit me or something. And she's like, what the cops? And Elizabeth, I hear yell, fuck the police behind. And uh, then whatever, like, we get, when Jamie gets home and I'm home, and my friend who told me the story is like chanting Rodney King behind me and stuff. Perfect. Yes, that's exactly what you want. Yeah. yeah. And uh, then the we get home and I'm like finishing the story and like filling in blanks on my own. And uh, the next morning when we woke up, one of the first things I said to Jamie was like, I don't think the cops 
this isn't the work of the police. No, I don't no. think the cops did this. And she's like, yeah, our friend Pete seemed like it wasn't. There was a friend of ours in a tiny cowboy hat standing behind me. Well, I told this story just shaking his head like, no, <laughs> this is not real. Okay, well, good. I'm glad to hear that's the case yes. in that story. There was no actual altercation with the police. Uh, real quick, you're going to be on tour uh, in the next uh, few months, right? And, yeah. Uh, one, of, one that I'm excited for you to go one town I'm excited for you to go to is where my sister lives, Wilmington, North Carolina. Do you know the dates on that one? Yes, April 12th and 13th. All right, so if you're in Wilmington, go see him there at mm-hmm. the Dead Crow. Dead Crow Comedy Club. I hear it's great. I heard it's great, too. Yeah, uh, um, and I'm, I'm in Boulder, Colorado, March 8th and 9th, recording an album. So cool. that's the other Ooh, big one. And then also we have a show with Greg. Yeah. Coming yeah. Up. Hey, yeah, now. the first one is February 29th. <laughs> Kevin's producing that show with me. Uh, we'll have to figure out which one you're hosting. You're going to host, and then you're beyond one yeah. in the future. But that's every last Thursday of the month at the Gutter in beautiful... Is that Greenpoint or Williamsburg? Uh, it's technically in Williamsburg, but it's right on the border. Yeah, you gotta Point. give Williamsburg a it's rare a top, win. It's a top New York comedy venue. It yeah. is the top. Yeah, it's popping. It is the yeah. top of the pops, baby. Uh, you a bowler? I can be. Oh, yeah, yeah, uh, yeah I'll bowl. <laughs> we got a bowl after that show, man. Yeah, yeah. This is like there's an incredible indie comedy venue in the back, and then there's like a bowling alley to the side and a nice bar. It's got it's got everything. It's got something for everyone. Yes. Uh, all right. So Kevin, thank you so much for being here again. Yeah. Great Th- to see you. Thank you for having me. This is yeah. the most efficient Thanks podcast I've ever been on. Yeah. Yeah. Roll through it, man. Roll through it. Thank you and good night. Talking Schmidt is recorded at Burmeister Studios in Astoria, Queens. Opening music is by Greg Burmeister. Closing music is by Greg Burmeister. Our intern is Jason Travis. If you like what you've heard, please like, follow, and write a review for us wherever you listen to podcasts. If you didn't like it, please keep listening to it, but keep your opinions to yourself. If you really liked it, you can find bonus episodes over on our Talking Schmidt Patreon page. Membership is just $5 per month, and it goes a long way to buy us the equipment and bourbon we need. Thanks in advance, and hope you're doing great.